you've been in the game mm -hmm. for so long. Um, how have you seen the, the rise of women's football over the years? Yeah, I think the rise of, of women in general, actually. Um, like I said, I think society right now, we're really fighting for equality um, and respect more than anything for women as a whole in general. And I think what we're able to do off the back of that is show the world that women's sports, uh, not just football, but women's sports in general, um, are actually a very good value, very high quality. Um, and although the organizations are now seeing that, it's fantastic that I think that they're gonna be a massive push in the contributions and the support of women. And I, I think that when that continues to get better here, it's just started, you know, which is great, but ultimately it is very late. Um, but what they will do now is start to invest and I think we'll see a huge, huge rise again in the next three to five years. And I think then women's sports is going to be on par, I think, with people will go and watch women's sports as much as they go and watch men's sports. If I was a young player coming up and I were to ask you, what does representing Wales mean to me? Mm. What does being Welsh mean to me? What does yeah. that, what would you say? You know, when you get a chance to put the red jersey on, the feeling that you get for it is, is like no other. And every time you put it on, it's like the first time you've put it on. And that's what it should feel like. The moment where you take it for granted or the moment that you put the jersey on and it doesn't mean that for you, then you need to just take a little step back and try and re-educate yourself on to why you're doing what you're doing and that's the way you'll have longevity you know because when these players come through they're not coming through for one game you know they're coming through I hope for 10 years of Welsh success. I know you said previously that school was tough mm -hmm. what just explain why it was tough. You know it was just a really hard time for me because I was going through my sexuality at the time, which, again, in school, no way of, of trying to understand what that was. You know, the, the education around um, sexuality at that point was non-existence. So, you know, me going into school every day was me just going into a blur, you know, not, not understanding anything, not understanding who I was, not getting any help with that, not understanding why I couldn't get better and learn about the one thing that I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So that was a blur. You know, I basically just spent my teenage years living a life, like a fake life, basically. You know, I just didn't know what was going on in any aspect of my life at that point, you know. But I was really lucky because I was playing football for Cardiff City Ladies and we were training twice a week in the evening um, and then obviously playing on the weekend. So I was lucky because even though school was not helping me, um, I had my football, my club, and kind of that little society that was. Did it, so did it save you? Did it saved save me, 100%. Absolutely saved me because they helped me navigate myself and who I was and what I wanted to be, they helped me. And I'm lucky because not everybody gets that. If there was a girl or, or a boy struggling with their sexuality in, in school, you'd been there, what sort of message would you have for them? Uh, just don't feel like you're alone, basically, would be my, my message is don't don't lock yourself away in your room. Don't feel like you can't speak to somebody. Um, my message would be find somebody that you trust and, and speak to them because dealing with it when, when you're alone and you feel like you're alone and inside your own head is, is terrifying and it's heartbreaking. And that would be my message is, is it is okay. It is absolutely fine. Um, you're completely normal. Um, but speak to people, speak to somebody. 
Would you want to be part of that change when yeah, you absolutely. go into that retire when you retire absolutely. and be a part of the education system and do these talks and to inspire the young generation? Absolutely. It's something that I really want to do. Um, but I just have to finish my career, yeah. have to get to the final and, and make sure I'm done with my career. Yeah. And then I'll Have you put a timeline on it? No. No, I just go with how I feel, how my body feels, and um, if I can still do it at the highest level, you know. Because, like I said, there are so many people coming through, and even our Wales team right now, we have so many, so many good players. I just have to make sure that I can still perform for us at the level that is needed. Um, and I'm really aware of that, you know. I'm aware that of my age and of my body and of my quality. Um, but I'm also very aware that it does not last forever, um, and so I'm not um, taking that for granted. So you could play possibly beyond the Euros then? No. <laughs> so there is a timeline though. <laughs> no. <laughs> Up to the Euros is, is definitely um, what I'm fighting my body and my mind for. Um, post the Euros, no. That is, that is not happening. Um, definitely not for Wales anyway. But you still be a club player in Maybe, America I don't know or... about that. It depends on how my body feels. You have a voice and you have a platform and and it would be it would be selfish of me to not use it in the right way. Um, and so yeah, of course that is what something that I'm trying to do is is to create change alongside showing showing younger people and, and girls here that, that you know you can dream big and the impossible is possible 